Galaxy Ring. Now, I've had this for about a couple of weeks now, and you know, we were talking about sleeping early run, and this is obviously supposed to be the ideal sleep tracker rather than having a watch, right? Now, one thing I gotta say, like in terms of the design quality and like, you know, you know, how it feels like a normal ring, spot on, right? Like it mm. doesn't feel like I'm wearing something different. It feels like a regular, you know, like a regular ring, like as I would be doing. And, you know, it's titanium, so it's quite durable. I've been, I, I was I was at the gym today and I was wearing it while during my workout, no problems whatsoever. Th thank you. Yeah. Because, um, you know, like that's <laughs> that's something that I think that's absolutely fine. IP68 water and dust resistant. It's also scratch resistant. So um, it's, it's, it's quite interesting, right? Uh, the other day, um, and my South Asian uh, viewers will know this, right? We had one of those um, big pots, you know, it's like silver sort of <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, pots. Yeah, you know, you know those, right? Yeah. Where and they make all the it. rice and stuff, right? Yeah. I was carrying that, right? Um, and then I looked at my ring and then I noticed some silver on it. And I was like, oh no, has the black coating um, rubbed off? On, and I was like, is that paint? And it was like, oh no. And then I rubbed it and it just came off. So it was basically, it, it, the, <laughs> it the, the friction, but the, the, the titanium was fine. But it was it was actually a little bit of a panic. I was like, oh, this is going to be something good to cover in my review. But, you know, I've got the black oh, wow. version. It didn't, uh, it, it, it didn't damage it whatsoever. So I was pretty impressed by that because it was, you know, it was essentially metal against metal, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it, it essentially ended up damaging that big pot, right? <laughs> but my ring was fine, right? And I still those, don't those see any Those pots scratches. are usually indestructible, man. I know, man. I know. So there you go. So that's a testament to how good it is, right? Now, I got to say, like, one of my favorite things about the ring, right? I'm going to come on to some of the negatives, but one of my favorite things is the charging case, right? The charging case has a battery built in as well. So you can, like, just top it up on there and it's just going to recharge on there without you having to, you know, it's going to give you two to three full charges. You're not going to have to, um, you know, plug it in because that's one of the problems that I had with the Ultra Human ring is that if I forgot my... Oh. Um, yeah, you try to like, like, plug it in and this and that, right? Whereas with this, I don't actually, like I could be here and I could leave the case charging at home and it's fully charged wirelessly. And then I could just pop this in when I'm in the shower and then boom, right? It's, 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 it's a very, very good really? thing to have, I'd say, right? Yeah. So that's what I really like about it. I like the compact size. Tracking seems to be relatively okay, right? In terms of um, steps and things like that. I'm not somebody who's, too active but like in terms of heart rate monitoring and like just general that's been fine now before i get onto the sleep tracking side of things what about you Enabong? i want to hear your thoughts so far um i've used it for about a week plus i have the i have a size 12 which has a slightly bigger battery so it's actually okay. more than the more than six days um i've used it to work out three times so far it's great to work out with people who don't want to work out with it or some, I know some creators as well as Marquez have said, like he didn't really want to work out with it. It's mm. fine. It's absolutely fine. Especially if you're using dumbbells, kettlebells, all that stuff. My workouts are usually involved with all that. Now, uh, what I've noticed from my workouts is the auto workout started. So what I've tried to do this week, I usually carry two phones with me. So when I went into the gym, I left, because this is paired to my fold, I left my fold in the car and I just took mm -hmm. my regular S24. So it's not connected to the fold. I was like, I wanted to register my workouts just mm -hmm. without me doing it because that's what I really would love this to do. So far, it did that, except one workout where it registered it twice, but also because one was kind of cardio and then, and then I had like a little break in between and then I started my workout. So it felt like, which kind of made sense. So I was okay. impressed with, with that breakdown. Um, I haven't charged it yet. So. That's <laughs> much battery life. I, that part I don't know. Um, but overall, the only time, the, I, to be fair, I've only looked at my sleep tracking once. I haven't looked at the other days yet. It was direct, it was accurate to the T. In the sense that, in the sense that, what I see mean by this T was I know I went to bed around 2.30 a.m. that day okay. uh, because I was, I was on my phone. <laughs> I saw the time. Yeah. I was like, I need to go to bed. So I probably fell, fell off around 2.35, 2, 2.40. Okay. And I woke up at 9 because I picked up my phone and it was 9 a.m. And Sleep Track had said it was roughly around that, which I was like, okay, this is, okay. This is on point. Um, but yeah, 
Um, I, I have I have to I have to mesh it with I have to pair it with other compared to other sleep tracking things sleep just tracking. to okay. just to see how it works. But that was fine. So here's my thing with the sleep tracking. Initially, I was actually very impressed with it because um, my sleep patterns are very different to a regular person. I'm not just somebody who goes there and sleeps and wakes up, right? I take time to go to sleep. So I'll be listening to uh, watching space videos or whatever, right? Okay, so it takes me time to go to sleep. Then I get to sleep and then I'll wake up for morning prayers. So, you know, there's going to be that interruption in the middle. Then I go back to sleep, which takes me a while. And then I'll wake up. I'll probably be in my phone for a little bit and then I'll actually wake up, right? Now, what I do like is there's a, there's a whole breakdown, right? So there's the time in bed, right? So this is the time that you spent in bed, right? Yeah. Then it's got your sleep latency. Then it's got your sleep time, right? So when do you actually sleep? Because obviously if you get up and go to the toilet or whatever, that's gonna, it's not going to count that, which is good. Then it's got your actual sleep time, right? And it, and it calculates you, you know, how much you actually slept, right? Now, generally, I was thinking it was quite accurate. But today morning, I was quite annoyed because when I look at my sleep time, it says I'm going to sleep at 10 past one, which is roughly about right. I woke up at about 10 past four, you know, for prayers. And then it says I went back to sleep about 4.30. Now, it took me a little bit longer to go to sleep, but fair enough. But then it says I woke up at 9.30 a.m., right? That is incorrect because I actually woke up about 8.45 and I remember like I was actually on my phone, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I looked at the time, it's 8.45. I'm on my phone for about, you know, half an hour, 40 minutes. Then I actually get up and then I look at my phone and it's it's telling me here that I was, my sleep was till 9.35. So it didn't actually detect that I woke up, which I was kind of annoyed about a little bit, right? Now that might just be a one-off, but that's something that I have noticed. Generally speaking, I think it's, kind of there, maybe, you know, give or take 10%, right? But that was one thing that I was a little bit worried about. Now, having said that, it is much better than what I found with my personal experience with the um, Ultra Human, because the Ultra Human would sometimes say that I'd be watching, you know, sat there watching TV or a movie and it'd say, oh, we detected a short nap. And I was like, what do you mean you de detected a short nap? I'm just sitting <laughs> watching a movie. Let me watch a movie in peace, man. Uh, let me rest for a little bit. So that's one thing that I will say now. I haven't used the Aura Ring and there's another there's another one as well. So I haven't used those, so I can't compare them to those. So far, I would say that the experience on the Galaxy Ring has been quite positive overall. I'm still unsure if the sleep tracking is spot on because that's what I would want it to be. I'm not sure if it's just because of my situation, but that's what I have found so far that it's not 100% accurate. Maybe it's about you know 90% accurate, but it's not 100% accurate for sleeping. So one of the things that I realized with these that might be an issue is if you think about it, all the sensors are on one half or one quarter of the ring, right? It's kind of mm -hmm. like at the bottom half. And you wear the ring, it rotates out. Now, if the sensor comes up to the top of your skin, it's not getting mm -hmm. anything or it's getting mm -hmm. poor information here as yes. opposed to this side. So Samsung has this little dent indicator there, which... Yes. I tend to place that and rotate, especially when I'm working out, I just kind of feel it and I rotate it. And usually I, I think it, it helps to get my workouts correctly. I've never really checked on it for sleep, but I think that might be the problem, even with the Aura Ring too as well, just because a lot of them, the sensors are in just one section. So um, I have to say that with, the, with this, I do like that indentation because it makes sure that I always you know, have it on right. And I have always had it on right, which is something yeah. that I do like because I think with the ultra human ring, there, it was just plain. So you didn't actually know, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Exactly. At, at night I'll be in bed and my wife is like, why is your hand blinking? <laughs> because you know, <laughs> it's trying to read and it's on the yeah. top side of my thing. And she's like, yeah, I'm yeah. like oh sorry, it's, it's, it's my bad. Yeah, well, with this, with, with this one, you've got the indentation at the bottom, which is I think perfect. And, you know, it's easy to put on the right way, should we say. And it's not, you know, that, it's not, it's not a thing, but it just stands out on a thing. And plus, generally speaking, you'll be seeing the top of the ring. So I, I do like that as well, that, you know, it makes it easier to. And if you've got a snug fit, like for me, I like a fit where I can take it off when I want to, because, you know, when I'm washing my hands, when I'm preparing for prayers and stuff, I want to make sure that I'm washing my hands properly and also getting that side. So I always take it off when I go to the bathroom and stuff, right? So I want it to be something that I can take off easily, but is also quite snug. And I'm actually quite lucky because I think I found the perfect size, right? Um, I think this is a size 
eight or nine, but it fits like perfectly for me, right? So I would say, make sure you t try the sizing kit and you find something that fits on snug, but it's not too tight. So like try to find that what, that balance because if you find yeah. something that's too loose, it's not gonna track everything properly because it's not always in full contact with the skin uh, and it could also fall off. And then if you find something that's too tight, then it's gonna be impossible to take off. And I know some people just don't take the ring off ever, but I mean, I'm sorry, but I do. <laughs> if I need to wash my hands, I'm gonna take my ring off. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think it, it's just very important to get the sizing of your ring uh, down. Um, I actually use this to wash like dishes, you know, whatever I'm like doing dishes and stuff like that. I just wanted to see if, what will happen, you know, I know it's IP68, but just to make sure. Yeah, it's that's his fine. It's fine when washing dishes. Uh, Edibon has to that. wash the dishes at home. That's his, that's his duty, he has to do that. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's whoever actually- When he's in trouble, fair. when he's in trouble. No, actually to be fair, it's, I, uh, I would say I, I, do, I do do dishes, um, like mostly the pots and pans, just because my wife is doing most of the cooking and then this dishwasher does most of the dishes. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. I was, I was going to say, man, it's, it's uh, 2024, man. I'm sure you've got a Samsung dishwasher. No, no, those, those, <laughs> those, silver, those silver pots, do not put them in the dishwasher. Oh, they, they don't even fit in the dishwasher, man. Those... Yeah, they, number one, yeah, they don't, but it's, yeah. it's also not good for you in the dishwasher as well, so. Yeah. yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Okay, I'll let you off there. But yeah, no, uh, for me, man, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I am super, super, when it comes to dishes, they all gather in my sink and then they eventually go in the dishwasher. And that's the only thing that does it. If, if there's something that's not dishwasher friendly, then it's not SAF friendly. I don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> I literally check that, make sure, okay, is this dishwasher, dishwasher friendly? Because if it's not, I'm not, I'm not buying it. I'm not getting it. But, but anyway, uh, <laughs> Galaxy Ring price, $400, 400 pounds. What do you think? It's fine with me. I, I know a lot of people were talking about it should be cheaper and stuff like that is that honestly, competition requires the price to drop. And currently for Samsung, not because the other rings out there, there is no competition. So yeah. that's that's the main thing. Um, I hope, I'm sure Apple will have a device like this in the future, which will force yeah. some interesting competition, as you've seen with the with the Galaxy Watch Ultra, where it is two hundred dollars cheaper than mm. the Apple Watch. Okay, know? so that's that's what competition does. Well, we'll see. But um, at the at the time, I'd say because there is no subscription, so what you pay is what you will pay. 400 pounds, $400, and that's it, right? Because of that, I'd say that the price is okay. I'm sure there's gonna be some sales, there's gonna be some discounts, there's gonna be some Black Friday stuff, whatever. We'll drop some links below anyway, if you're interested, but I do think you might be able to grab some decent deals once the device has been out for like a good few months, right? So watch mm -hmm. out for those, but because there's no subscription, I'm gonna say that, you know, the 399 mark is, is okay. Yeah, I agree. 